So hi everyone, so rank season 1 has ended and I'm here to bring you all the stats for various leaders. So this will be a multi-part series I hope to launch over the coming days. Um, so stay tuned to find out more uh, information on various leaders and how they are performing in the rank season. So first of which we'll talk about Count Ariana. Count Ariana has the lowest win rate amongst all the leaders. Okay, She has a 15.2% win rate um, and <laughs> that is pretty low, As, uh, assuming like for, for a 4 player game you have like 25% win rate on average. So she's picked 211 games and wins around 32 of them. So I think around 1,500, uh, 1,500 games are played around there. So actually she's not very popular and she's not even winning a lot of games where she is picked. So like the people who specialize in her or the people who think she's good in certain scenarios are not even winning in those in those cases. Okay, I think a lot of times um, um, one of the thoughts that's echoed amongst players is that she's quite good at picking up three costed Toexu cards um, because she gets water early and she's able to convert that into research station. However, I'm gonna share why I think this is not really true. I don't think this is true because to get the extra water, you actually need one of these three cards. You need Seek Allies, you need Signet Ring, and you need Diplomacy. So, of which which is unique to Ariana, uh, Signet Ring is unique to Ariana. So she gets one additional out to get the water for Research Station. And this is assuming you're going to buy it around uh, one. So there are a lot of other things that need to line up for this to happen. For Ariana in specific, right, if she's using her signet ring, and this is the case where she has the benefit of only her, she gets the benefit, to access research station, she actually needs to play reconnaissance, right? So she needs to play reconnaissance, she needs to draw into two experimentations, or have two experimentations at the start. So this leads to uh, you very niche and very specific hands where this is doable. It doesn't improve her outs by a lot, maybe slightly, I don't know the exact percentage but you do need a specific combination of cards for it to happen and it's not very likely furthermore if you are to even if you are to get stitch horror or python with this very expensive play of playing like signal ring reconnaissance experimentation experimentation the likelihood that you draw badly is very very high you, can, you have seek allies in your deck and you have two daggers right so Imagine if you play this hand, you end up going to research station and revealing for two. Sure, you buy stitch horror and get a shuffle, but a lot of times you can miss. You can not draw the experimentations. You then you you miss a cycle of your your stitch horror anyway, or you can um, yeah just draw low persuasion and not be able to buy and support your stitch horror as well. So in contrast, right, other leaders can play seek allies, then play reconnaissance or signet ring. Right? And this gives them one less bad card to draw into. So they have one less um, bad card, which is Seek Allies to draw into. So let's say the worst that can happen to someone else right, is what they draw a Diplomacy and two Daggers. And what this is three Persuasion. So three versus two Persuasion. Uh, yeah, I mean, three Persuasion is better. Um, and what is more is that anyone can do this, right? If you pick Ariana to do this, uh, anyone who has a good ha starting hand uh, of Seek Allies, Reconnaissance or Ring, right, can choose to do this and then you are blocked out completely. So I, in this case, I don't think Ariana gets the benefit that she wants and hence I don't think she's very strong. So next we'll talk about Helena. So Helena has a 16.5% win rate. So uh, Helena actually is one of the more popular game. Uh, with, uh, one of the more populated leaders. She's featured in about one third of the games. So she has about uh, 538 games, and of that she has 89 wins, right? So um, so I think in contrast, right, in Rise of X, she's actually a pretty decent leader, hovering at around 26% win rate. So what has changed from Rise of X to Immortality? So let's say this is the Imperium rule in Rise of X. What will happen in a typical Helena game, right, is that if Helena is picked, Helena in her first action, she will use her signet ring to pick Gurney Halleck. She picks Gurney Halleck, and after that, what happens? Everyone else has very bad cards to buy. They end up buying a lot of liaisons, and compared to Helena, 
the comparative advantage of having Gurney compared to like a bunch of players who just have a liaisons. Gurney Halleck is so much better and that powers her to multiple victories because relative strength in terms of buys, her buy is so much better. What happens in immortality? There's this thing called the family atomics, or commonly known as atomics. So the atomics allows you to nuke the Imperium role, and this causes um, this, this advantage of Helena to be lost. There's more parity now because even though Helena picks the only card in the row, someone can just refresh the shop and suddenly there are good cards to buy again, right? It's not as though someone is locked out of the row completely. So yes, I think the Atomics makes the game um, more interesting. You get to play more powerful cards, um, overall power levels higher. But because of that, Helena loses her competitive advantage. She's no longer able to single out the... The, the the good cards and just keep it all to herself. Now everyone now everyone gets good cards. So is Helena a bad leader? So amongst uh, the top Helena players, so PP, Drezo, Felk Dev, GVX and Doom Over Morale, <coughs> they currently have a 34% win rate with Helena. Uh, you might think this is a high number, but I think amongst the top players um, some leaders can get up to very insane numbers when it comes to win rate. So actually this is a pretty uh, mild um, win rate. So let's say if you specialize in her, you'll get very good at her. I think you'll be able to get up to like a 30% win rate with her. So she's not un unpickable. But um, let's say compared to Ariana, Ariana at, at high... Um, at high skill level, it still still has like a very low, like maybe twenty percent win rate kind of, kind of, uh, win share. So, um, is Helena bad? Um, not, she's not terrible, I think, but um, it's not easy to pilot her as well. So, uh, when it comes to piloting and playing her, and um. Sometimes you don't draw into your signet ring, or you draw your signet ring and multiple daggers. Um, there are a lot of things for Helena game that can go wrong. So, so which reflects into her win rate of 16.5%. So she's the second lowest win rate. So next we'll talk about Prince Romber. So Prince Romber actually has an 18.8% win rate. So I think he's higher than uh, Helena because he is not as popular. He has 992 games and 36 wins. And of these games, right, I, if you know Romba players, Romba players really love playing Romba. Um, players like, um, yeah, players like Lannister, for example, he, he really loves playing Romba. And even then, he still thinks that Romba is not very great in Immortality. And let me tell you why. So, in Immortality, the current meta is to get Swordmaster. Swordmaster is very, very important. Um, because there are a lot of cards which you need to play in Immortality. Um, because playing your experimentations becomes points. Playing your experimentations becomes an advantage of sorts. You can get spies, you can trash cards, you can get intrigues. So if you don't play your experimentations, you are uh, in some sense falling behind. And getting Swordmaster is the easiest way to play your experimentations. right? And what does Swordmaster require? Swordmaster requires Solari. Uh, I think in Rise of X, when uh, when Lannister did the video with Oski um, about Romba, he always talked about a round six Swordmaster when you kind of get it not really uh, forcefully, but you get it because you get Solari from combats or you get Solari from uh, other people smuggling or sh or going into cell shipping, and that passively gets up you gets you up to eight Solari, and eventually you just buy your Swordmaster at round eight. However, because it is um, very hard to play a game without Swordmaster now, um, Prince Romber also needs Solari for Dreadnoughts. And because he has no passive way of generating this Solari, or he has no easy way of getting Insular Shipping to get this Solari, it's very hard for him to get this advantage of uh, his Dreadnoughts. In addition, Spice is also more rare. So because spice is more rare, um, because everyone is playing their experimentations, it's harder for him to collect spice as well. Um, he has he has low actions and he suffers. So Lannister boasts a thirty percent win rate of Romba. I think he has played ten games, rank, and three of them are wins. So 
I think if you get excellent at Romba, you still at a 30% win rate. But I think coming from um, Lancer himself, uh, Romba really suffers in uh, immortality. And I think if if he is not very confident on Romba, I don't think that Romba um, is a very good leader at this point. So finally, we'll talk about... Um, the fourth leader and the final leader for this video. So Duke Leto Atreides has a 19.6% win rate. This is a very low win rate. He has 591 games played, so he's quite popular. And he has 116 wins. So I think a lot of top tier players will rate Leto very highly. So why is Leto's win rate so low? Leto's win rate is so low. Is and I guess, yeah, we have to ask the question, is Leto bad? Right, it's little bad. I mean, he's picked so many times and he's only won twenty percent of his games. Um, my answer to this is probably no. Uh, Lito is not a bad leader. I think in tournament play, he often wins a lot of games. A lot of these games are slower because people are fighting against each other more. And I guess good players are playing Lito in these situations. Amongst sneaker, sneaker dead, uh, myself and Trigma Mail, um, who is the Muadip champion. Together, we boast a 62.5% win rate with uh, Duke Leto. So, together, we boast a very high win rate with this leader. And so, <laughs> so, so once again, compared to like Helena, Romba, right? This is insane, right? So, 62% of the time we win. So, what do we know that other players do not? I, I've talked about this in other games where I've casted, where I've talked about Leto. Um, but let me just share with you what I think is the issue with Lito. Lito has uh, a signet ring that allows him to be prudent with his diplomacy, right? He spends one spice and he gains an influence where other people have more influence than you. So early in the game, people are using this to get into Stellar Shipping Exit. Yeah, a lot of times when you want to play your signet ring, right, you have to play it to a space that has like a plus zero spice bonus. And playing a signet ring to that space means you're not playing an experimentation. Um, the cost is very high. Uh, but if it allows you to get interstellar stripping access um, unblocked or priority on interstellar stripping access, it is very good. Right? So a lot of players play Lito to get interstellar stripping. Uh, a lot of this is legacy from Rise of X. So his passive right is Landshark Popularity. So with Landshark Popularity, you can get Swordmaster Round 2 or you can get Mantad very cheaply. Um, however, a lot of times this is in conflict with um, the your Signal Ring ability. Because you actually want to... Uh, you feel like compelled to do both, right? You want to go to Mantad, but you want to use your Signal Ring because and you to do that, you need Spice. So what happens is actually that these two uh, abilities are quite conflicting in nature, um, at least early on in the game, right? And a lot of times, I, I see players trying to do both, right? And when you try to do both, actually you succeed at none. Um, when you want to use your signet ring, but you uh, also want to get Mentat, you want to get uh, uh, Swordmaster, you want to do everything, but you end up doing nothing at all. So a lot of times I see people um, playing their signet ring, not getting interstellar shipping access, or not even getting Mentat because, um, um, or Swordmaster because they don't have the Solari. So do take note that you actually want to do one or the other. You want to either get Swordmaster round 2 or round 3, or you want to get Mentat a lot, or you want to uh, get interstellar shipping access um, before everyone else. You don't need to do everything, but you need to do at least one of these things, right? Um, I think the meta doesn't help him a lot because uh, Count Urban is very popular in the meta now. And if there's Count Urban on the board, um, he is definitely going to take Mentat. Uh, I think as Duke Leto, Mentat is something that you kind of want to do as your second action. You kind of want to use your spare Solari to kind of cycle out your daggers or to just play your signal ring. However, if there's Urban in the game, you don't get this chance at all. Um, so that's why. The, they are more conflicting now as in before. Sure, you can have not have a Ilban in the game and, and then you can still do uh, use your ring and then go to Mantad. Um, but with Ilban being as popular as, as it is, uh, it is harder. So you, you want to make sure that you can do one or the other. And uh, I think because players are trying to do everything, they aren't succeeding at anything. And uh, I think you might think that this is 
something that only like new players or like or like average players struggle with i think this is across all ranks when i look at the data across like uh, um low skill to high skill right Lito's win rate doesn't improve tremendously from low skill to high skill right um Lito does well in the hands of a specific group of people and uh, i think that if you learn to focus on one or the other your win rate will improve and so we've come to the end of this uh <laughs> we've come to the end of this part of the statistics i'll try to cover maybe four more tomorrow and with uh increasingly rising win rates so do put your predictions in for who do you think is the highest win rate at the end of all of this and i hope any questions you can ask below and i'll try to answer them uh, i hope you enjoyed the uh, rank season one and rank season two has started so do uh do start playing uh, I'll, I'll put in a end of season survey if anyone wants to do it. Uh, I think even if you did not play, you can you can put you can participate in it, um, as well as some ways to support me. Uh, you can support me through Patreon. You can support me through subscribing to this channel, and I think liking and commenting the videos do help a lot. And that that's all. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. See you around.